Good evening everyone, welcome to the council meeting. I declare the meeting open at 6pm. I'd like to start by acknowledging that tonight we meet on the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. We have a full house tonight so there are no apologies. Um, so that takes us straight to public question time and receiving of public statements. So. Um, I do see many familiar faces in the audience, but if you haven't been here before, just to let you know, this is your opportunity to come up to the microphone, speak on an item that's um, on the agenda. We do ask that you state your name and the suburb in which you reside, and we do ask that you please keep to three minutes. There is no set order. Um, the tip is that whoever speaks first, that item will be deliberated by council first, so if you <laughs> want to use that as an opportunity to have your item dealt with up front, uh, the race is on to the microphone. First speaker, please. Us to the CEO for um, applications for leave of absence. Through you, Mayor Cole, uh, we have an application for a leave of absence uh, from yourself from the 3rd of April to 6th of April uh, for personal reasons and a application from Councillor Loden uh, for a leave of absence from 9 April to 25 April for personal reasons. I believe I have to deal with them separately, so I'll put um, my request forward. Um, Moved Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Gondoszewski. All those in favour? I declare it carried. And we'll now move to Councillor Loden's request. Can I have a mover? Moved Councillor Castle, seconded Councillor Hallett. All those in favour? I declare the leave carried. Thank you. Um, the next item five is receiving of petitions, deputations and presentations. This evening we have none. Um, I'll now move to confirmation of minutes. And we are dealing with the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council of the 5th of March 2019. Can I please have a mover for the minutes? Move Councillor Loden, seconded Councillor Hallett. All those in favour? I declare the minutes carried. Item 7 is announcements by the presiding member. I do have a few things that I do wish to mention this evening. Um, first of all, um, I do want to mention that Saturday a week ago on the 24th of March, it was a significant event held outside the Perth Mosque and it was referred to by one of our residents here this evening. Chris referred to it at the, um, at the briefing last week. It was a memorial held outside the Perth Mosque for the tragedy in Christchurch. And um, it was certainly worthy of mentioning because it was a very significant coming together of people. Um, after a tragedy, the Perth Mosque held an open day, opened their doors, um, offered some incredible hospitality within the mosque. Um, it was a lovely opportunity to pay for people to share stories, to come together, to meet, um, to eat together. Um, there were speeches and I think one of the things that was particularly moving was to see um, both Hacker for Life and Corroboree for Life um, perform both the Hacker and a, a, a cultural ceremony. Um, so this ceremony really um, had at its heart at uh, the first um, peoples of both New Zealand and Australia. Um, speeches from members of the Muslim community were incredibly um, inclusive, um, spoke um, incredibly well and uh, I think that everyone who attended felt that that was, um, that was a really fantastic event to bring people together and to demonstrate unity at a time of um, distress over an incredible tragedy and act of extremism in New Zealand. So. Um, a wonderful opportunity and we thank the Perth Mosque for opening their doors to our community. I'd also like to just let people know that at the moment our integrated transport plan is um, open for consultation. This is about all things transport, whether you're walking, riding, cycling, uh, could be riding a scooter and cycling a bike, that's why I mentioned it twice, Councillor Hallett, I can see you laughing. <laughs> um, um, public transport, you name it, we're interested. We did have a forum on Saturday at the North Perth Town Hall, but we do have a survey and on-site um, um, consultation open until the 13th of April, so we do welcome all feedback um, to help us write an integrated transport plan, which really sets us up sustainably for our future. 
Also on transport, it's worth noting that our 40 kilometre per hour trial speed zone does start on the 29th of April, so that's this month. It's finally happening after us talking about it for about two and a half years. Really great to see this underway and we look forward to um, working with the Office of Road Safety to study the results of that trial to see um, what comes out of that. Um, also, we have some significant infrastructure projects underway at the moment. Um, we have uh, been closing a few roads which can create a few headaches for people but the results are we think worthwhile and should be fantastic for our town centres. Um, we're currently constructing the Leadville Village Square on Newcastle Street. Um, we have we've um, reached a significant milestone with North Perth Common in that we're now just waiting for the overhead circular light artwork to be um, in put in place and we're also at Oxford Street North we've done some significant road works up there and we planted trees on Sunday so it's great to see the trees in there and that will hopefully really cool down that town centre and make it look beautiful too. Also just like to say congratulations to Northbridge Common for a fantastic neighbourhood neighbour day event at Stewart Street Reserve on Sunday. It was simple, um, it was just really about bringing people together and it really created an incredibly warm and friendly neighbourhood feeling. So it goes to show that our town centres don't have to do anything fancy to bring people together, they just have to be welcoming, do it well and um, really entice neighbours out into the local park together. So that worked incredibly well. And just finally to mention that this Saturday is our very popular native plant sale and sustainability pop-up. It does start at 8am if you want the kangaroo paws, I recommend that you get there at 8am on the dot. Thank you. Um, we'll now go to the CEO for declarations of interest. Through you, Mayor Cole, uh, we have one declaration of interest from Councillor Toppleberg. It's a financial interest in relation to item 9.8. The applicant is a current client of Councillor Toppleberg's business. Councillor Toppleberg is not seeking approval to participate in the debate or remain in the chambers or vote on the matter. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. I'll now go around to council members and ask whether they wish to bring any items forward for debate that haven't already been um, raised in the, by members of the public gallery. Councillor Gondoshevsky, we'll start with you this evening. Nothing for me. Councillor Toppleberg. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just 14.1, thanks. Councillor Fatakis. No, thank you. Councillor Loden. 12.1, uh, please. Councillor Murphy? No, no further, thanks. Councillor Harley? Nothing further, ma'am. Councillor Alex Castle? Councillor Hallett? Okay. And also just to note that um, item 9.1, which is number 1 of 281 and 2 of 284, uh, Vincent Street, Leaderville, proposed change of use from home office to office has been withdrawn um, from the agenda this evening and is likely to um, Director, is that likely to be back at next month's council meeting? Through you, Mayor Cole, that's the current plan, but it will um, depend on the applicant as well. Thank you, Director. So we're not dealing with item 9.1 this evening. That has been withdrawn. So I'll just ask the CEO if he can take us through the items that remain to be, remo to be moved on block. Through you, Mayor Cole, uh, the proposed items to be put on block are item 9.2, item 9.3, items 11.1, 11 11.2, 11.3, 11.4, item 13.1. That's it. Thank you. Um, and just, um, we do also have a confidential item and did double check today that um, we can't move confidential items on block. Okay, so um, for members of the public gallery, we'll jump around a little bit just to explain that the way that we deal with council business is that we go to the, um, first go to the items that were raised by yourselves and in the order that they were raised. So that means that the first item that council will be um, Oh, sorry, yes, I've done that before, haven't I? My apologies. Before we do that, just um, allow us to vote um, for the on block items. Apologies. Move Councillor Toppleberg, seconded Councillor Harley. All those in favour? 
Thank you. I declare the on block items carried. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Um, we will go to item 9.7 first because that was the item that was raised first by a member of the public gallery and that is number 131 Harold Street Highgate, proposed change of use from educational establishment to medical centre. Moved Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Gondoshevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a couple of questions and I apologies to the officers for harping on the same things, but my understanding is that the, uh, well, the advice that we received is that the car parking bays that are intended to be used by the proposed development have been allocated to them on the strata and are not common property, which is what enables them to apply for uh, or to make this application without the signature of the <coughs> strata. Is that correct? Through the chair, that's correct. Okay. And I apologise, I didn't come back to you with it earlier, but uh, Mr Bean raised a question earlier uh, in his uh, submission saying that the original approval said that the visitors' bays for the residential component should be available to commercial uh, during business hours, which I thought was unusual, so I went back and had a look, and I can't see that anywhere in the approval. But what I did see is that original condition 2 uh, C states that the car parking area shown for the non-residential component shall be shown as common property on any strata or survey strata subdivision plan for the property. So can I just ask the question whether it is actually possible for those uh, bays to have been allocated to the strata if the original planning approval said that they would have to be shown as common property? Through the Chair, what's occurred is the there have been 24 bays allocated to this specific strata, this specific tenancy, 131. Those bays are also have a reciprocal easement over them and the easement specifies that those bays are to be available for reciprocal use between the hours of 6pm and 7am and all other hours are for the exclusive use of the commercial tenancy. So that's captured via an easement on the certificate of title for all those strata tenancies and it's also in the strata management plan for that site. Okay. The, I just wanted to clarify as well, the common property bays that I believe um, the applicant may have been referring to, there are 32 bays on site in a separate location that have been designated as common property and they're captured um, also in the strata management plan as being 32 bays available at all times for visitors to the subject site. Those bays are not proposed as part of this application for the purposes of the assessment. Okay, and I'm sorry to harp on it, but from a technical point of view, I, my reading of the condition is that it explicitly says the car parking area shown for the non-residential component, which I would assume means any car parking allocated to any uh, non-residential use on the site, which, it, the, which is currently the, uh, the school, uh, I guess, like without, and I understand the strata plan and the easement, but if the original planning condition precluded that from being allowed in the strata plan, it was to be shown as common property. And I guess what I'm, get, what I'm getting back to is the original, is the question, clearly the Council of Owners has a different view to this strata owner as to the suitability of the proposal. I'm just making sure that if we make a decision to allow this use, that it is not contravening the original planning approval, which would require the signature on the Form 1 from the, the Council of Owners because that property would be common property. Does that make sense as a question? Through the Chair, there's a couple of answers to that question. The first one being that um, it is our view that when the assessment was undertaken and is the intention in a number of applications that the base provided for that tenancy would only be required during the typical business hours for that tenancy and so it's our view that the intention of the condition for them to be common property was that so that they were available for use outside of those standard business hours for the remaining residents of the site and we believe that the strata plan as created and the easement that adjoins that accompanies that is, is appropriate um, and that those bays have appropriately been identified on the strata plan and are for capable of consideration as part of this application. In terms of if they were shown as common property or if they're shown as they are now, we've confirmed, um, we've obtained legal advice that confirms because the use of those bays, so the bays have been, um, were shown on the original plans as car parking bays and they are proposed to remain as car parking bays and as that use is not changing, the application as proposed does not apply to those bays. 
in that they're not changing the use of the base and no approval is required for that element of development. The application that we're considering tonight relates to the change of use from educational establishment to medical centre and there are bays associated with that use but the use of those parking bays aren't, isn't changing. And so the advice that we received is that if the use of the bays and the access to those bays remains consistent with what was approved on the original application and what's shown on the strata plan, then the approval of the strata is not required. Okay, thank you for, the, for that clarification. Um, and just also because there's been some questions asked, I think it's good to discuss it. My understanding is that the current operation of the vehicular access gate is different to what is under the uh, access management plan as approved. So it is not currently open during business hours uh, and it only has FOB access. And my understanding is that when visitors arrive, if they wish to park uh, underneath uh, or if they wish to park in the basement car parking, they need to park elsewhere and then go and ring. There, there is not actually a, an intercom that is uh, adjacent to... Uh, I haven't checked it out, but that was my understanding from a conversation that I'd had. But uh, can we just get... I did speak to the director earlier today, but my understanding is that the current vehicle management and indeed the uh, conditions of sale uh, when the, um, the apartments were sold to uh, current owners did not specify... It actually specified that that gate would be a secure and locked gate, uh, providing secure access and car parking, uh, which I understand is there. That's, a, that's not a... City of Vincent issue, but can we just get some commentary around that gate currently being closed during business hours? Through the chair, attachment seven provided in the agenda relates to the um, vehicle access management plan that was submitted and that you've referred to. That formed part of submission for the final strata subdivision and was approved by the city. I'll note, um, just to comment on uh, one of the members from the gallery stated that that parking management plan refers to access via Harold Street and being available for free and open use of those bays and having reviewed the plan and also the strata bylaws the gate to Harold Street would provide access to the lower ground level car park and that would provide the access required to the 32 visitor bays that are stated to be available and accessible at all times and it would also provide access to the seven bays um, proposed for use as part of this application. The, that may not be operating in accordance with that original approval and that's why administration has recommended if council wanted to support the application incorporation of condition six of the recommendation which will require submission of a vehicle entry gate management plan and for that to be implemented. That would also allow the applicant to go away and discuss with the strata and potentially obtain approval if they wanted to make the bays that are in the basement, the remaining 17 bays allocated to this tenancy, which are accessed via Sterling Street only, if they wanted to access, have those bays available and the gate open to that section at all times, that something, something that they perhaps need to discuss with the, with the strata before they submit the vehicle access gate management plan. Thank you. Um, Oh, um, no, I think I'll happily listen to the debate on this one. I don't have any uh, specific comment at this time. Thank you. Um, look, I think it's clear that the issues that have been raised uh, that sort of remain in the room uh, around parking and access to the site. Um, uh, I, I guess at this point in time, I'm advised that the, and from the documentation provided, um, that the development has um, available to it for its use um, sufficient parking um, and that as part of the condition of approval that a plan will be required to ensure that, that um, those bays are accessible. Um, I recognise that there is the, um, the uh, documentation that uh, appears that the current operation may not be in alignment with the um, the documentation as presented um, uh, and I guess I can certainly appreciate the um, uh, I can appreciate from residents perspective um, that it is it would be preferable to have gates to their parking um, remain uh, 
locked or operated by FOB, um, and uh, I, um, I would presume that in, if there is some discussion with the council of owners, that that view will be reiterated. Um, however, I think that um, from the uh, gallery today, um, that there appears to be a mechanism by which the gates could continue to. Um, that there could be access by the uh, customers of the site um, to the bays that are provided for the operation for the, um, the, the clients as well as to staff um, potentially without um, you know, actually having too much meaningful difference to the way that the site operates now. Um, and so with that in mind, I'm, I'm happy to support this uh, application. Councillors, Councillor Harley. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, through you to the Sorry, what's your title? Acting Manager, Developing Acting Manager Design. Development. <laughs> Sorry, I've I, again my uh, questions relate to parking, and it was it relates to the um, parking management plan that's been submitted, and um, I'm not convinced. Um, I, I've heard you, but I'm not convinced about um, the points put forward about the strata um, and the common property. I, I own a property. I own I own two properties in relation to strata. Um, one in relation to common property and commercial use, and it's never that simple. Um, and uh, because there's a level of control that cannot be exercised um, over common property. So, for example, residents who park on common property, there's a convoluted process that the Council of Owners or authorised persons have to go through to even have those um, cars moved or shifted or penalised. And I note in the parking management plan, there's some issues been raised in there. And I just want to draw your attention, because the proposal is to create a private enforced car park within that strata complex. Now, that to my mind, I do not understand how strata approval is not required for this change of use application. The nature of ownership within a strata property is you simply do not own everything um, that that it looks like you have on your plans. There is outside some strata plans, you you don't own the roof space above, um, you don't own the common property where your customers would need to walk to. So any strata uh, group of owners um, would surely have to have a say in a change of use um, for a strata property within the complex because it inevitably involves the use of common property and I am really perplexed about why um, we do not require the actual owners of the property and I mean the collective of owners that is through the council of owners through the strata management company to be part and parcel of an application process I don't think we have a policy um, pertaining to that and I think it's you know I, I think it is something that we need to think about as a council because we have more and more strata properties and this is not an uncommon discussion with this discussion's arisen from the entire time I've been um, on council and we get we do get mixed responses to be honest um, from administration so to my mind regardless of the car parking there is a, a a large complex here which has 131 owners um, who own in in shares all the common property and who may have a significant say in whether something um, can be a change it can be authorized for a change of use I'm of a mind to actually defer this and to, to have this and happy to listen to everyone else's debate, but I'll, I'll, I'll do the polite thing and foreshadow because I'm not convinced by that at all, being an owner of a common property which I share with commercial myself and knowing over a 15 year period, the many, many, many discussions um, I've had to have as one of the council of owners, um, including with lawyers at times. Um, my other concern in here and it's on page 456 of the parking management plan, which infers that strata management approval is actually required for components of this. And I think it's a very important component because it goes to the heart of the discussion, which is access to parking. And it's under the recommendations. And the proposal is that they wish to create a visitor's car parking policy, so which indicates one doesn't exist at the moment, um, to conform with the current planning approvals for the site. Uh, Councillor Topberg has read out what the planning approval was as far as this council were concerned and the manager has highlighted that there's some easements. Again, I, I query how that, um, how that can happen, but I, I take your word for it, they're in place. 
but it states here that they need to obtain strata approval for the policy. I don't understand how that, how that can tallies up with the statement that it's really just up to the owner of this particular property, the 24 car bays are theirs to operate Monday to Friday. If this proposal is reliant on them getting strata approval for a policy, and the policy is to create an enforceable, um, with City Vincent signage and registration, an enforceable parking bay within that property, which essentially becomes a private bay, I'm assuming, for the hours set out in our original conditions. And if there's any con contravention, the City of Vincent's going to be, uh, be called to go in there and to book people. It ain't that easy. So my concern is in the parking survey, there were already cars parked in, those t in some of those bays, some of them for long periods of time, which means they have an enforcement problem at the moment. Um, and I've got some serious concerns um, in regards to this. So I'm going to foreshadow um, a deferral motion. I'm interested to hear the rest of the um, debate this evening. Um, Councillor Harley, thank you for those comments. I will just go to the manager because I know that the um, staff have been quite rigorous in exploring the issues of, of strata and the common property. So if we could just go to some of the issues raised. Um, if you could outline which areas um, Form part of the that form part of the application constitute common property, and if you could just deal with some of the issues raised about um, dealing with strata and strata approval. Through you, Mayor, the application as proposed does not propose the use of any common property beyond the vehicle access way, as mentioned. Earlier, we obtained some, obtained some legal advice as to whether or not approval would be required to continue to access bays through common property areas. And the advice provided was that the approved plan and the approved strata plan showed that vehicle access way as common property and that the application is not proposing to alter that for use for anything other than access way and therefore that wouldn't require the approval of the strata. To clarify, the application proposes use of the 24 bays on site allocated to that unit and that has been conditioned in the approval. What's also been conditioned and considered in this application and is probably not quite clear is that the applicant ap applied for a more intensive scale of the development and the parking management plan prepared reflects the scale of development that they applied for. Administration was not supportive of that scale and has conditioned the application to reflect a reduced scale of development which would only be capable of operating with the 24 bays allocated to that tenancy and doesn't rely upon any other visitor parking on the site and is, we believe, suitably accommodated by the parking available on site and if required on the street surrounding there. The reference made in the parking management plan prepared by the applicant about um, potential to have a parking policy that's administered by the city, that's actually out of the management plan, the strata bylaws and the management plan prepared for the site, which states that for the visitor bays that are accessed off Harold Street under bylaw 37.3, oh no, sorry, 37.4, that should the um, strata uh, wish to do so, they can enter into a private parking agreement with the city in respect to the visitor car parking bays. And that's what the applicant's referring to in their parking management plan. So if they wanted to utilise those visitor parking bays, then under the strata bylaws, it's recommended that they would enter into an agreement with the city to manage the use of those bays so that they won't continue to be taken up by residents of the site. That is not being considered as part of the recommendation that administration's put forward because we've conditioned a reduced scale of operation. In relation to elements that may require strata approval, such as the vehicle access gate, the Develop Planning and Development Act approval that is being considered is not bound by the Strata Titles Act and the owner of that of the tenancy and the applicant is still required to comply with the requirements of the Strata Titles Act and obtain any necessary appro approvals for any alterations or amendments that might impact on their strata that is, relates to the common property. And that is a separate process and an advice note has been recommended if Council resolves to approve the application that it's not, this is not an approval under the Strata Titles Act. 
Excuse me, may I ask a question, sure. please? Um, there was a further question. Th thank you for that. Um, I had a further question in regards to a comment that was made from the gallery in regards to the use of radiologists um, in there. Can I clarify through you, um, through the chair, whether this is um, a radiologist rooms for the purpose of writing reports or whether this is actually x-ray equipment that is going to be in there? And then I've got a subs um, subsequent question depending on the answer. through the chair, just struggling to open the plans, but I believe on the ground floor plan there is a radiology clinic proposed. Through you, Chair. Through you, Chair, to the manager. May I ask what, um, whether the applicant has submitted any additional plans in regards to um, the X-ray equipment being on site and the additional building requirements and health and safety requirements that may be required in operating an X-ray machine. Do, have they submitted any information in regards to what else is going to be required and what they're proposing to do? Through the chair, no, they haven't submitted any of that information. I believe that's governed by a separate legislation and not generally considered part of the development application. Sorry, through you, Chair. One sure. further question. Um, in regards to, I, um, and it's my fault for missing this in last week's briefing, because um, I hadn't, I wasn't aware there was going to be a radiologist on site, um, but is there a um, particular waste management plan that is dealing with the X-ray um, waste, and is there any nuclear medicine going to be undertaken on that site, please? Through the Chair, I don't believe any consideration has been given to the disposal of radiology waste, but we could certainly, if Council wanted to consider approval, add that as a condition for a waste management plan to be provided for that purpose. And through you, Chair, is there going to be any nuclear medicine conducted on site, please? Through the Chair, I'm not aware of that. Just through the Chair, if I could just add um, the radiology clinics are governed by separate legislation, so um, the waste management um, and the, all of the requirements around use of x-ray equipment is governed by separate legislation, state and federal. Um, those requirements aren't reflected in the planning legislation and they're not reflected as um, requirements that need to be considered. Through you, Chair, one further question. Are they a requirement in regards to a waste management plan within the City of Vincent for us to understand how waste, um, um, particularly in regards to radiology waste, which is significant and is um, can be dangerous, which is why they have super enforced rooms and significant um, laws around them, and potentially the um, disposal of nuclear waste, which we nuclear medicine waste, which we don't have an answer for at the moment, is are they required to comply with any rules for the City of Vincent? Um, I understand that waste will be disposed of on site um, on this common property, so I think it's a pertinent question. Yes, through you, Mayor Cole. The applicant hasn't proposed, as part of their application, um, the use of nuclear medicine. Um, if they had proposed that, and that was part of the application, it's obviously something we would have investigated in detail to understand um, how and whether they would be complying with the federal and state legislation. Um, if they do decide to go ahead and for some reason um, conduct that kind of activity, they'll obviously be required to comply with state and federal legislation as it applies. Um, and so given they haven't proposed that specifically, um, it's not something that we have considered as part of this assessment. Councillors. Any further comments on this application? Can I just Council. ask a further sure. question? Um, 
It just relates to a comment uh, from uh, the gentleman from uh, Mr. Beam who spoke, I'm assuming, on, as, or on behalf of the applicant. Um, on page 383, the city outlines its reason for supporting what has been presented as stage one of the proposal, effectively saying that stage two would have a presumed it would uh, have an unmanageable amenity impact, but state, the intensity of stage one is considered to have a more manageable impact. Um, it was made quite clear during the public comment period that uh, it's pretty much not profitable and there's no intent to operate at that level and that stage two is the medium term goal. Just in terms of, and I know that approval of one doesn't necessarily guarantee the other, but where it has been made quite clear, does the existence of the use on site, regardless of the fact that it's only part of the site, uh, would that, where would the city stand at a later date if stage two was applied for? Through the chair, if they sought to apply for stage two, that would go through a separate application and be considered against the relevant criteria at that time. Um, we would also consider how the intensity of the use is working at the moment, whether there's any ability to review and increase that um, if there'd been no issues related to that, but it would require a separate application, a separate assessment. Councillors. Through you, Chair, I'm going to move a deferral motion on this item, please. Is there a seconder for a deferral? Can I just ask for what purpose are we deferring? What's the purpose of the deferral? Um, purpose for um, to have additional questions that have been raised tonight um, answered. Um, there's still questions in regards to the parking and strata, but also the use of radiology um, and um, matters around that. Is there a seconder for the deferral motion? There being no second of the motion lapses, we're back to the substantive. Is there any further debate or questions on this item? Councillor Topper, um, are you commenting because you will close debate? Okay, look, I just did want to quickly comment that um, there have been a lot of questions raised about the parking. I think that um, our development services staff have been very rigorous um, in going through the previous approval, informing the clear understanding that we are dealing with uh, parking which is allocated to this use under the existing approval. There is no reliance on common property or um, common um, parking arrangements for this less intense use. That certainly was the case um, if stage two were being considered tonight. Um, other air issues where there was an impingement into common property areas was the lift. That is not a proposal under um, stage one. Um, this is a significant heritage building. Uh, it is valuable to the city and it is good to see a use um, that will come into this building and keep that building occupied and hopefully well maintained. Um, I do um, agree with the officer's assessment that stage two was a much, much more significant um, intensification of use and I think that what is proposed here and the way that that works with the ongoing operation of the college on the first floor um, is a good outcome. I do hope that in um, discussions with how the gate can operate that the idea of an intercom system that can be operated by the medical reception. I think that's a good idea because whilst the original approval did um, uh, envisage that there would be access and that could be an, through an open gate, that hasn't been the practice on site and I do understand for residents who have had a secure car park that that may cause concern and while um, that approval is there um, for access to be granted, um, I think it would be worthwhile and good to hear from the applicant that they are prepared to pursue having an entry system in operation for visitors. So um, I do uh, speak in favour of the recommendation for approval and I am confident that all of the car parking issues have been clearly investigated, clearly articulated and I'm confident also that the issues around strata have been thoroughly investigated and that legal advice has also been sought by the city on those issues. So I support the application. Uh, Councillor Toppelberg. Thank you. Um, to make a couple of comments. Uh, there was a comment, uh, provi or an answer provided earlier about the original approval, uh, condition 2C. Uh, I, I can't reconcile the interpretation that it refers to part of the car park but not other, where it says the car parking area shown for the non-residential component shall be shown as common property on any strata or survey strata subdivision plan for the property. Um, I don't support deferral because for me that's fairly clear in my understanding of what that means. Um, that aside, I think for me the, the actual 
use uh, and clearly the intensity desired uh, and the intensity that's proposed under the recommendation. Uh, if we had a look uh, in media we saw recently uh, where a pharmacy that has been uh, part of the city of Vincent for uh, 20 plus years which is up on uh, Beaufort Street uh, has, uh, was, was in the media recently. It relates specifically to their 24 hour uh, operation but I think the idea of putting a pharmacy in what is a residentially zoned area uh, not far down the road from some, uh, there's clearly not a demonstrated use for uh, for the need. I think that the whilst it is uh, a, a and I suppose an interesting and uh, potentially desirable uh, use of a significant building, a heritage building as the Mayor has pointed out. I think that the impact on the residential, uh, surrounding residential area is uh, significant um, and I don't accept that the car parking matters are resolvable because I take a different view personally on uh, the definition of how, the, how that strata plan should have referred to that common property and for me without a changing to their approval that says that that is not common property. I can't see that as anything but. So for those reasons, I won't support the officer recommendation. Councillor Toppleberg being the mover has closed debate. So it is now time for me to put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? I declare it lost. Um, we are now in a situation where the motion has um, been refused. Do we need an alternate? Okay. Director, do you want to talk us through what will happen from here? An alternate recommendation for refusal. Yes, through you, Mayor Cole. I think it would be good to start with um, the reasons for refusal from council members, if that's possible at this stage. Otherwise, we can take what we've heard as part of the debate. I'm happy to move uh, to move and to provide reasons. Uh, so A seconder for the alternate um, motion for refusal. Councillor Harley. So uh, the intensity or the impact of the commercial uses of the, the impact of the proposed use on the surrounding residential neighbours? And the other perhaps need to seek technical advice on how it would be worded, and it perhaps is only my reason, so there are others who put their hand up for it, but the inability of the applicant to provide sufficient on-site parking given that they are relying on common property uh, which does not have the approval of the strata. And I understand there's a different view from administration, but that's something that would need to be clarified. For those um, members who um, supported the refusal, do you have um, reasons to add, please? My main reasons were parking. Um, I've heard advice that the, my concerns about the radiology um, waste are um, under federal and state laws, but I have a deep concern about the um, removal of waste by the City of Vincent or on City of Vincent land of radiology medical waste and potentially nuclear medicine waste. Councillors, Councillor Fatakis. Mine was more relating to the intensity of the use and the impact on local residents, um, mainly with regards to parking and visitor access. Thank you. Any other councillors? Director, do you have what you need? Okay, through the chair. Uh, first reason for refusal being the proposed development is inconsistent with the City of Vincent's local planning scheme number two and the objectives of the residential zone as the development is proposed to operate at a scale and intensity that is not compatible or complementary to the adjoining residential development as a result of potential impacts from parking and vehicle access to the site. If I'm able to add, and, and, and uh, in particular the shop use on the ground floor, which is the pharmacy. 
Yes, Mayor Mayor we can add that. And the second reason for refusal in relation to the parking um, may be best to refer to the condition of approval, the original condition of approval. Um, so perhaps the reliance of the proposal on parking bays required by condition 2C, yep, 2C of the original approval, which states the car parking area shown for the non-residential component shall be shown as common property. And then in relation to um, the waste management issue, um, I think it would be as simple as the lack of a waste management proposal in relation to um, the radiology component of the application. Do you have what you need, Director? Yes, that's everything. Okay. Do you want to read it out now? <laughs> Sorry, just because we have to vote on it. We can if we can tag team, if that's all right. Jocelyn can read the first reason and I'll move from there. <laughs> Unfortunately, the screen's not working, so... Okay, the first reason for refusal is the proposed development is inconsistent with the City of Vincent's local planning scheme number two and the objectives of the residential zone as the development is proposed to operate at a scale and intensity that is not compatible or complementary to the adjoining residential res development as a result of the proposed parking and vehicle access and shop located, no, full stop after shop. Right, can I just ask if the word adjoining can be changed to surrounding for residential uses, please? Yes. Two, the reliance of the proposal on parking bays required by condition 2C of the original approval, which required these bays to be common property. And three, the lack of a waste management plan to address the requirements. Oh, where am I? What's of the, the radio. Oh, of the radiology proposal. Radiology cl clinic proposes part of the application. Okay, so we have a motion. Can I have a mover? So it's moved, Councillor Topperberg, seconded, Councillor Harley. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Topperberg? Councillor Harley, do you wish to speak to it? Councillors, are there any comments? Um, I would like to ask some advice from administration on the grounds for refusal. Through the Chair, uh, number one, we believe that that ground for refusal is valid as the zone, the site is in a residential zone, the use is a uh, a user so requires the discretion of council and requires us to consider the proposal against the objectives of the zone and we can conclude and, and ultimately the application that was proposed administration was not supportive of the scale that was proposed so it's reasonable to use for reason one as proposed. Yep, okay. Reason two relating to the car parking as indicated previously administration sought legal advice regarding the car parking and administration had supported the part, the strata plan with the car parking shown um, and believe that the strata management plan and the easement on the strata plan allowing for the reciprocal use of those car parking bays is sufficient and does satisfy the requirements of that condition. So I don't believe that that is a suitable reason for refusal. So can I just seek a point of clarification? When we sought legal advice, was the strata plan 
as approved shown, or was the original condition of approval shown? So the, so the legal advice we received didn't see the condition that stated that the non-residential bay shall be shown as common property when they provided that advice? The strata plan was provided along with the previous approval and the conditions. Reason three, relating to the disposal of the radio clinic waste. I don't believe that we could use that as a reason for refusal as this decision is being made under the Planning and Development Act and the disposal of that waste is managed under a different legislation and would be subject to subsequent approval. Thank you. Are there any further comments or debate on the alternate motion? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? All those against? I declare it carried. Okay, moving on. The next item is 9.6. Number 8, Moyer Street, Perth. Change of use from single house to unlisted use, short term dwelling. This is a State Administrative Tribunal, Section 31 reconsideration. Can I please have a mover for this item? Moved, Councillor Gondoshevsky. Seconded, Councillor Hallett. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you for everybody who's come along tonight and um, waited. Uh, look, for me, this is really based around um, the idea that um, if, if we considered that all types of short-term accommodation were suitable in all circumstances within the residential zone, we would um, make it a permitted use. But ultimately, um, it's, you know, they aren't and it's not. Um, so we need to consider the detail of the application, the um, unique context and the views of the community. Um, I don't consider that this type of short-term accommodation as proposed where a caretaker does not reside on site to be suitable in this location. Um, ultimately this is high density living um, with common walls, a limited ability to design out impacts from neighbouring properties and I think that it is reasonable to have a high bar for preventative measures to mitigate the potential risks associated with short-term <coughs> accommodation if it was to occur in the residential zone. Um, the views of the local community are clear and they have um, seen what can um, and have reported to us what um, they have experienced um, in terms of a negative impact to amenity um, when um, the uh, management plan is not in place or not adhered to. Um, I don't like the idea of um, us um, having as part of an approval um, a car bay being required within the um, front setback area where our own design guidelines do. Um, uh, they don't actually even allow discretion in relation to having um, uh, car bays in the um, front setback area. So. Um, look, ultimately I'm not supportive of the officer recommendation that's on the table and I would support an alternative um, uh, recommendation um, after the debate, should it be um, something that we can consider. Councillor Hallett. Uh, thank you. Um, not to reiterate too much of that, but um, just agree with Councillor Gonczewski around um, having a high bar. Um, this is a not just that it's high density and it's residential and um, being wary of introducing commercial um, activity into um, resident, residential areas, but I think this particular precinct is also unique in all sorts of other ways and, um, you know, the building form and um, the local community have um, been pretty clearly um, articulating, I guess, some of the concerns about um, the high use that does resolve um, around from short-term accommodation, so um, I, don't, I don't support the current um, recommendation and also would support the alternative recommendation. Councillors, Councillor Castle. Through you, Mayor Cole. Yes, I, I reiterate and agree with Councillor Gondoshevsky and Councillor Hallett. Um, and in addition, I'd say that um, I'm not su also not supportive of this on the basis that I'm not convinced that the management plan is, is um, enough to actually prevent these problems happening in the first place. Having a, a plan in place to alert the Care to off-site caretakers when noise arises might be one thing, but it's not really going to um, to deter people from booking this um, particular property being in the location that it is for some of the parties that we've heard are fairly common. So I'm also not going to support the officer recommendation and would support the um, alternative recommendation when, when and if we get to 
councillors. Councillor Howie. Um, through you, Mayor, I'm um, conflicted in regards to the officer recommendation and um, a, a potential alternative. And I'm conflicted because of, I guess, some of the comments that I've heard tonight and last week um, and in the ongoing public debate about short-term rentals. So in my time on council, I have heard a lot of things said about a lot of different types of people with owner occupiers being the highest order of resident um, desirable in the city of Vincent. I've heard um, tenants um, in Homes West places described in all sorts of offensive ways. I've heard of um, tenants um, not being part of a community, not being able to add to a community. And I see a growing, um, a growing criticism of short people who take up short-term rental and of people who actually own short-term rental. We have hundreds of these places existing in the city of Vincent. We, uh, across all of our neighbouring cities, there are hundreds of um, residents that are either full homes, full units, etc. And I am concerned about the pigeonholing of people who stay in short-term rental. I myself have done it. If I took a straw poll tonight, I suspect that many people in this room tonight and people watching this broadcast um, use, for example, Airbnb and other short-term stays as their preferred choice of international, interstate and regional travel. And we and they are not all party animals trying to bring down the neighbourhood. Um, in many cases, they um, short-term um, tenants add significantly to the local economy, add significantly to the cultural experience um, of a local neighbourhood, promote our city to friends and family through social media, etc. So I just I couldn't let this pass without going on the record and airing my concerns about that. I am at the moment a tenant in a home. Um, I rent another property out. Um, I am soon to rent a second property. I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, I've had problems with tenants. Um, I myself am a very good tenant, I have to say. I take care of the garden and my landlord loves me. And I don't have parties because I don't have a life. But um, I can tell you my neighbours down the road do. And they're long-term tenants. And the neighbours, you know, there, are, there may be issues with them in other places I've lived. I know of long-term owner-occupiers who are the bane of the street, <coughs> the way they park their cars, the noisy, the fact they're shift workers, FIFOs, the fact they have parties every Saturday night. I just want to listen to the rest of the debate, but I, I want it on the record that there are all types of people who live in our community, short term, long term, etc. There is no one perfect model. And I think as a city and as a group of residents, we have to accept this challenge um, that we are going to have short term people coming into our city. It's part of our future plan, particularly through Leaderville, et cetera, um, and um, I'm sure that we can find ways of um, allowing all those people to integrate without pigeonholing them as party animals. I actually think, can I say, out of all the short-term rental things that I've seen come before us, this management plan is actually one of the better ones in terms of the monitoring. In fact, I've never seen an application where there's on-site monitoring um, where they can have, I, I question the privacy laws in regards to this, but where they can actually, you know, it can be triggered. So I commend the owner of this um, property on a without prejudice basis that they've even thought about that level of monitoring. So I'll listen to the rest of the debate with interest. Councillor Fatakis. Well, there's uh, quite a bit there that I'd have to disagree with with Councillor Harley, but um, going back to this um, this issue, I considered um, the application um, in light of this particular property. Um, and while I did that, um, there are a lot of reasons why I won't be supporting the application. Um, and it has been noted um, this area um, is really unique um, and it's, um, it's one of our most prized. Um, nonetheless, um, I suppose, no less I should say, the award that it was given in 2017, the UNESCO award, um, and it paid homage to some of the outstanding restorations um, and did give credit to returning to a sense of the community in the area. So there's a lot that I think we need to really um, consider when we're uh, looking at a change of, um, of use. 
um, looking through um, the applicants' reports and um, really questioning what sense of community and values really were. I think it's when we look at Vincent, all of our precincts can be quite different. Um, there's a lot of common values that you can actually see in uh, different precincts, common interests, like the heritage um, preservation values, getting to know your neighbour, being respectful, being supportive, helping each other, feeling safe. Um, not being um, affected by undue noise, um, those incidental um, interactions, those daily interactions, and like we saw on the weekend, um, meeting neighbours at neighbourhood events. So the culture is very strong in, in across Vincent, but I feel it very um, strong. I think I um, would say it's uh, probably one of those areas where I can see that sense of um, neighbourhood very, very strong. So we look at this change of use um, to a short-term use, an Airbnb style, um, and I've considered the impact to this community and its character and humanity. Um, I look at the original home share model of Airbnb and similar platforms, and that's a way to help homeowners occasionally rent out a spare room and earn some extra income. Um, and it's for a long time. That, that's, that model has gone. For a long time it's been taken over by commercial operators leasing entire homes and apartments. In Sydney last year, 61.5% of the 33,000 Airbnb listings were entire homes. So they weren't leasing out those occasional rooms. So it's a a problem here, I and mean, it's a problem in Tasmania, where they've now actually banned Airbnb within uh, Greater Hobart. But the applicant himself actually referred through to um, areas where he lived um, in Spain. So let's go to what's happening across the world, um, and it even includes the um, birthplace of Airbnb, and that's San Francisco. There's some really troubling issues that are happening, and for our, I look at our community and how much effort that we put into building strong community. There's some real concerns that are being um, aired across the globe about the impact that it's having on a whole range of areas. Um, tenants being displaced as housing stocks are depleted. And when we look at affordability of um, and soaring rents in areas, I love the fact that our city is composed of people from all backgrounds. It's not overly gentrified. There's still um, rents available at all, all levels. Um, the noise and antisocial behaviour, and I know that um, I've been a tenant myself, I've got great tenants who've been leasing one of my properties I think now for about three years. Uh, I hope they don't leave when it comes to me when they need to renegotiate. But there are those instances and it's documented again, the noise and antisocial behaviour, the party houses, the parking congestion and waste management. Um, waste management issues. They're documented across um, when we're, we're dealing with Airbnbs and the short term in inappropriate locations. The detrimental impact on community and especially when it comes to heritage and cultural precincts. Um, so even in pa Paris, I mean a quote from last, um, last year that Airbnb threatens the soul and identity of a number of their neighbourhoods. Um, they're looking at ba um, banning, so their um, short term rentals in Paris now are limited to 120 days per year and even as much as last month uh, the reports of uh, considering a complete ban. Edinburgh, London, San Francisco, they're now limited to 90 days a year. Amsterdam, last year was 60 days, they've now reduced that down to 30 days a year. So 30 days of the year is that limitation of being able to um, lease an Airbnb, uh, Airbnb with a, a whole of property. Berlin, Palmer and Spain, short term rentals are banned altogether. Like I mentioned, uh, Greater Hobart but it's now banned short-term rentals. Um, New York, it's illegal for properties to be leased for 30 consecutive days or less unless the host is present. So all of this is happening around us. All of this is happening in other countries where um, the short-term rental and the Airbnb and the other like movement have actually been ahead of us for a very long time. And we're all making changes to really try and rein it in and, and bring it back in. So I'd like to think we'd learn from that. I'd like to think we'd look at those examples where people have struggled with the management um, of 
ever been by another short term rental and we actually make some um, really considered um, decisions when it comes to um, what we approve and where we approve these, these into. There's quite a few other things that I won't touch on that I do have. I suppose um, disagreement with the application. Um, I also sort of made, um, noticed that um, the applicant stated um, in his um, message to councillors that um, he had made contact. Well, he certainly didn't make contact with me to put his, uh, personally discuss the issue. So I'd like that on the record. Thank you, Councillor Fatakis. Councillor Toppleberg. Thank you. Um, so some well some quite valuable information in relation to perhaps a policy around Airbnb or otherwise, but in the absence of it, we have a development app, we have an application for a uh, use which is uh, not a permitted use under the scheme. Councillor Gondoshevsky spoke before about uh, if it was suitable in all circumstances, then it would be a P use. Uh, likewise, uh, if we're to believe the horror stories that we have just heard, it would perhaps be an X use. Uh, within the city of Vincent, it's neither of those things. It's something that we uh, that it is capable of being uh, capable of being approved. Uh, there's a couple of issues for me. So the question that I asked uh, of myself in this is, given the nature of the management plan, and I, whilst I accept the uh, concerns over what has happened with the uh, during the unauthorised use, uh, that is. Uh, potentially considered as a test case or otherwise, but um, in planning terms that's not directly relevant to the application. The application relies on the proposed use and the management plan that comes along with it. Uh, the management plan, uh, I ask myself in the reverse, if we were to not accept this as a suitable management plan for a proposed uh, short-term accommodation use within the City of Vincent, are we effectively saying that unless we have an on-site manager uh, present, because we can't talk about limitation of days or otherwise, because that's not a policy that we have. We can't, uh, we can't invent those things on the run. So in the absence of that, short of an on-site manager, I can't think of any other measures that could be taken to, uh, as far as a management plan uh, goes that would, would make it an allowable use. That being said, I also do want to point out um, uh, the applicant did reach out to me. I did catch up with him sometime uh, between the refusal and uh, the, the um, the application in its current form coming to Council. One of the things that hasn't been mentioned that I do think is uh, of some relevance, it's been, I guess, in some ways demonised by some of the neighbours in terms of uh, living overseas and purely seeking profit. One of the simple reasons is that living overseas with family here and the intent to come home and visit family is that having the luxury of owning a property and being able to stay in your own property, whether it be for two days or two weeks, as that need uh, arises is something that the owner uh, has an interest in, and I think that is as valid as any other view uh, in relation to the length, uh, the duration of tenancy. Uh, the, the the idea that uh, somebody would own a property and have something available to them under the scheme that means that they can enjoy that property for the time that they are in the city, uh, I think is a, as I say, a, as valid uh, as any other uh, d debate. For me, the one of the key issues and. Uh, um, we have the esteemed Mr Stewart in the, in the gallery who brought up uh, the car parking. Uh, there's no question that, in my mind, that the car parking bay exists and uh, the car park, the, what is proposed, uh, is not uh, seeking to make any development changes. It's a change of use. So the car parking bay itself can be allocated to the property. Uh, my concern is, in the event that this was approved, if there was any uh, move to uh, renovate the property at all, uh, it would then trigger an assessment of the guidelines, which then means that effectively, because of approval of this, there would be the, uh, the inability to be able to remove the bay because the use is relying on uh, the existence of the bay. So I think, uh, for me, that's where I sit with the car parking bay. Um, as far as the, the uh, I suppose, the... Uh, the, the actual use and its compatibility or its suitability, for me it comes down to not a general view on Airbnb or the compatibility or, or otherwise of uh, Airbnb even more generally uh, in the area. It's specifically uh, this proposed use uh, for this property in this location. Uh, and it's not very often for me, but I could probably comfortably argue on either side of it uh, for this one. I think that I could happily make a case uh, for it to be uh, 
for it to be approved, but where I've fallen on this uh, on this one, uh, perhaps for diff reasons quite different to those that are spoken about uh, previously, uh, I think that in consideration, um, as is the requirement uh, under our scheme, which says that the use is not permitted unless uh, due consideration has been given under section 64, I think it is, of the Act, um, uh, which requires advertising consideration of responses and th the use in context, uh, where I've fallen is that uh, probably because of its proximity to uh, Northbridge in particular uh, and the uh, propensity without an on-site manager or without something that is permanent, the, uh, the in where I've fallen is that the presumed frequency of issues despite the uh, veracity of the management plan mean that uh, I won't support the officer recommendation. Um, where I've struggled is what's sitting before us as proposed alternative. I struggle to see some of the reasons that are in there as something I would support as well, but that's for me to deal with. But uh, I think that this, as a planning matter, and Councillor Harley brought up some points about short term in general, I think that this has been uh, uh, in some ways seen as a, uh, a straw poll on Airbnb in general or otherwise. As I said at the beginning of my, my comments, this is something that is allowable uh, under conditions and what is before us is a management plan that is uh, um, very particular and very, very stringent. But in the absence of a policy, uh, if we were to look at something that was to be, uh, I do have concern that if, we, if this was to be approved that uh, there is potential for um, for other similar applications in the absence of a policy to be able to uh, take advantage of the same um, uh, or to be able to go down the same path and that's something that I don't think would be ideal for the area. So whilst I'm not trying to create a policy out of it, I think that there are uh, defensible reasons for to be able to say that it's, uh, it's not appropriate uh, for this particular dwelling in this particular location with the, the, the plan as, uh, as proposed, but I will listen further to the debate as well. Councillors, um, I will add some comments to this. Um, as, as stated, um, we opted, we had a, a time when we were considering local planning scheme too, whether we wanted to add short-term accommodation as a permitted use. Some local governments do have that in their scheme. There's a variety of different treatments for this. We decided that that was not appropriate and as such it is an unlisted use. Um, we've talked about the fact that we need to develop a short-term accommodation policy. We do have something in place at the moment which really doesn't deal with the situation that we face with the increase of Airbnb across the City of Vincent and that's something that we will um, be doing next financial year and I think that's where some of the debate is happening. But for me I'm really taking this back to the application that is before us. Um, yes, I take the point that this management plan um, is quite comprehensive in terms of some of the technology that it seeks to use, but I think that the application is greater than the management plan and that context is incredibly important when considering where short-term accommodation is appropriate. We are dealing with the Brookman Moyer Street precinct. It is a low density residential neighbourhood, an intact residential neighbourhood in Northbridge, very close to the city. This is actually an incredibly rare thing to have a wholly residential area of low density, R25, that close to the city. It is a heritage area and it's subject to very strict guidelines. The houses have common walls. Um, the the, having a residential community in a city is a very valuable thing and I think we need to understand the value of that in that we are live, the community is living amongst a thriving commercial town centre metropolis and this is, this, is a, this is a residential community that is there living, breathing, going about their routine, living their life in this big city that is growing and densifying and changes are happening around it. Um, I don't think that it is appropriate to have a short-term accommodation in this use and I do take the point that if we did allow this that it would lead to potentially further um, applications. We had some discussion, I had some discussion with the officers today about whether this is technically a commercial use and I think that the jury is out on whether it is a technically a commercial use but I don't believe that it operates in a manner similar to a residential dwelling. I do believe that having changing tenants on a short term basis is different to a residential dwelling where you have long term whether it's owner occupier or renters and I don't think the debate has been a, an owner occupier versus versus rented debate. I think that the debate has very clearly been about short-term 
accommodation and short-term guests coming and going, not having a routine, being on holiday, not having a, a routine to life, which is part of being a long-term resident in an area. Um, just to take us to the uh, heritage guidelines, there is one clause here that I thought worth a mention, clause 1.1. 11, where it's talking about the objectives of the policy and it says that the one-way thoroughfares and modest lot sizes of the semi-detached dwellings contained within the Brookman and Moyer Streets area gives it a particular character and a sense of enclosure. The character guidelines also talk about parking in the front setback area and I take the point that the development is about the use of the house and um, and that the parking is existing. Um, the officers today also talked about the fact that the R codes still currently require parking allocation to, um, to dwellings, even though this does have character retention. We haven't sought WA planning approval, planning commission approval for that variation. We should, if we have these character um, guidelines, that should be the step that we take. But I do think that in linking a new use that requires that parking bay, that is a requirement of approval, that as Councillor Toppelberg says, if there was a willingness to undertake renovations, to bring back that veranda, to, to actually do what the guidelines require and request if there is an application to improve or um, extend the home or to do works, that would be incapable of being achieved without the applicant coming back to seek a variation to a condition of approval for short-term accommodation which ties it to having that car bay in, um, in operation. So um, I, do, I don't really take any interest in issues around demonising the applicant, in pigeonholing. They are not issues for me. I think that this is really, on its planning merits, a very good case of where context is important. We have discretion. In this, you, in this context, I'm saying it's not appropriate for this short-term accommodation. Any further comments? Okay, I will put the officer recommendation. All those who wish to support the officer recommendation, all those who report support refusal. That's unanimous. Does anyone wish to move an alternate motion? Councillor Gontoshevsky, seconded. Yeah, the yellow. Yes, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Castle. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to speak on this for, mu for, for much, but I will say that um, that ultimately I think that the um, the issues are around the residential amenity, the um, and the compatibility with, of the use within that particular site. I, I think that the um, clause two of the alternative recommendation um, talks about satisfying the intent of clause 13 of the design guidelines in terms of incorporating the use of a car bay, um, uh, re recognising that the um, that the view has been put forward that the um, that ultimately the use of that bay is not um, changing, so it's not necessarily part of consideration. I I do take a slight. I accept that view, um, but I do believe that it has certainly formed part of the decision making on this um, matter and should be reflected in the reason for refusal. So, Councillor Castle, yeah, through you, Mayor Cole, I don't really have anything to add. I think most of the um, the reasons that are outlined here for refusal were covered in the comments on um, the original recommendation, and I'll support this alternative recommendation as written. Councillors. Councillor Toppelberg. Thank you. I just propose an amendment. Well, I've got a couple, but um, we'll start. So an amendment to propose clause two. So we say the proposal does not satisfy the intent of clause 13 of the Brookman and Moyer Street Development Guidelines as, then delete the rest of the words, and insert approval would rely upon incorporation of a car bay in the front setback. I'll talk to that if there's a seconder. Is there a seconder? Seconded Councillor Gondoshevsky. Yeah, so whilst there's no advice notes other, or otherwise, I think that for me that's uh, it's critical to say that it's... Sorry, just before sorry. I was checking, do you want to read the um, amendment sorry. words? So again? after the word guidelines, as approval would rely upon incorporation of a car bay in the front setback. I guess the alternative is to suggest that if it were approved, 
and uh, renovations were to be undertaken to restore the, uh, the frontage that the use would p potentially be able to exist without a car bay and I think for me personally that would have a, if it was proposed with zero car parking bays that would be an, a reason for uh, in, a, in and of itself for a refusal so the fact that approval would rely upon the car bay is what to me ties the, um, so it's not just the incorporation of it, but the fact that approval would actually rely upon it uh, is what triggers the the um, the nexus between that and the uh, development guidelines. Councillor Konchevsky, councillors, um, I support the wording. I think that makes sense and is a better expression. Any further comments? Okay, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Declare the amendment carried. We're back to the substantive. Um, I will move to delete. Uh, Clause 1.3. If I get a seconder, I'll explain why. Is there a seconder, Councillor Harley? Uh, I think that the issues relating to the residential nature, uh, but I, I can't see how people staying for shorter periods has a direct impact on the heritage nature of the area. I don't think. I think that's probably, in my view, one of the strong arguments. Uh, potentially the other way. Uh, uh, as to why you would want to encourage people to experience the streets. So I, I can't see uh, that as a reason for refusal personally, see if it flies, but I uh, wouldn't support that as a reason. Councillor Harley. I've got nothing further to add, I concur. Councillors, Councillor Fatakis. Um, I think the Mayor touched on um, an aspect of uh, developing our community and part of a heritage character I don't believe is always the bricks and mortar or the hardware of a community, it's the people. And I think when you've got people moving in and out of an area as opposed to that stability of a residence, um, for me that is where you've got um, that impact on the heritage character. The other aspect that I look at is um, when you're looking at this approval, that inability to really be able to f um, fully develop that um, that house or restore that house back to really the, the same level of quality as, as its neighbours. Councillors, um, look, I don't believe it's the strongest ground of those listed, but I do think that it does go towards consideration of the um, heritage guidelines and some of the um, introductory comments around um, the residential um, aspects and the way in which um, these are small, modest lot sizes, that there is a sense of enclosure, that's a one-way street system. I think that these issues do go towards the particular context of this residential area, so I still believe it's worthy of inclusion. Councillors? OK, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? All those against? Six um, against, three in favour. Okay, that was lost. We're back to the substantive. Any further comments? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour of the motion? All those against? I declare it carried with Councillor Toppleberg voting against. Okay, 9.6 has been dealt with. Thank you everyone for your patience. Tonight, so far, we've debated two items. <laughs> Go, Vincent Council. Okay, the next item is 9.8, number 58, Kalgoorlie Street, Mount Hawthorne, single house. Um, Councillor Toppleberg is leaving as he has a financial interest. Moved, Councillor Loden, seconded, Councillor Castle. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we've obviously seen this one just last week. Um, there has been a number of changes and modifications to the dwelling that has happened in that time. Um, however, for me, the, the, the primary issue with this, um, which is really down to the Balkan scale, the dominating position it has on the established residential streetscape, the detraction from amenity and character of the area, and that does not meet the objectives of the residential design codes, in particular objective 1.3.1a. Um, uh, I all agree with those as reasons for refusal. 
as a standalone development, if you just look at that, I personally don't have huge problems with the design. The issue is how it fits into the rest of the streetscape there. I recognise other people might have different views on, on what it actually looks like. Um, I do take the point of the comment from the, the applicant uh, last time round about that they there isn't that, that clarity for them around what this development should be looking like so that it does fit in the streetscape. We do have um, character retention strategies that is and, and it being developed potentially um, and those should provide those that level of clarity that the applicant needs uh, so that they can find something that does appropriately develop their their site but also fits with the the character in the area as well at the same time so as such I um, support the officer recommendation for refusal councillors councillor castle through you Mac oh, yes I also support the recommendation for refusal um, while I can see that there has been some changes made and, and there has been changes made throughout the whole process with this application. I don't believe that it's gone far enough in addressing the original reasons for uh, refusal that were outlined last month um, and I agree with Councillor Loden. I think for me the bulk and scale and, uh, is, is a significant factor in um, refusing this application and its interaction with the streetscape and with the community on the street. I think that although some widening has happened to the front window design that still does not allow any two-way interaction with the street and it really um, doesn't change the impact of that um, large dominating front exterior. So um, I'm quite comfortable with the reasons outlined in the recommendation to refuse this application. Councillors, Council Gondoshevsky. I just want to quickly say that um, I ultimately support the officer recommendation. However, I think um, my support for it really relates to the um, large blank wall and the front facade, the upper story wall, the front facade. Um, I, I think architecturally this is a strong design. It may not be to everyone's taste. And yes, if there are character retention guidelines that are put up for this design, um, uh, to the, for this you know, area, then um, it is certainly not going to comply with those, I would imagine, but they aren't in place at present um, and, um, and I'm not making any statement as to you know, what's going to happen in future, but, but ultimately it, um, you know, we have the, um, the applicant has made um, quite a few changes, I think, to improve the interaction with the streetscape um, and to um, perhaps reduce the, um, the bulk and scale of the dominating appearance um, of the development. Um, but uh, it hasn't quite gone far enough for me, and so I do understand and accept the reasons for refusal. But um, uh, I think it's it's quite a they're quite narrow grounds for refusal in this one. Um, and I think I, I still think that the applicant has worked to um, make some changes, um, but that um, that major feature of the design, which I don't necessarily dislike, I do absolutely accept is. Um, uh, creates a, um, a the, the bulk and dominating appearance that's not compatible um, with the um, context of the area. Councillors, um, through you, Mayor, I um, just want to, um, I guess, go on the record to say I actually think it's a beautiful design. I think it's a, um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful home, and um, it may not be on the right street, unfortunately. Um, and I also concur that I don't think the grounds for a refusal are the strongest that I've seen. Um, but uh, it's too much. It's too, too much bulk um, for, for that block. And that's, that's the thing I've kept coming back to over and over again. I don't actually have an issue with the, with the top floor. I see houses all the time that meet the requirements and then within weeks they've got you know, they've got creepers growing up and they've got, you know, their own things. I think there's lots of ways that people can um, manipulate um, that issue where we can see in and they can they can see out and they do it in a variety of ways around the, around the city. But as a design, I think it's really beautiful. I think it would be a gorgeous house to live in. Um, but I do acknowledge um, some of the issues that have been raised um, throughout, the, throughout the weeks of debate that we've had. Um, and I do want to acknowledge the applicant for... Um, also having made a number of significant changes, but on this occasion I support the officer's recommendation. Councillors? 
Um, just some final comments on um, this. I also just want to acknowledge that um, this is a high quality architecturally designed home, that we do see a lot of project homes that are coming into our areas and that this is, as a concept, um, incredibly um, considered. It is, um, it is in the right context, could, as Councillor Harley says, um, could be a very beautiful home. I do um, want to acknowledge the changes that the applicant has made to the rear, um, where there has been um, quite a considerable changes in relation to the rear setbacks. Um, I think for me the, the issue is, as identified, uh, is the, the interface with the street, the fact that the, sec the first floor or second storey, perhaps will be better described, is cantilevered, that it is um, a very uh, blank interface with the street. And I think that the, um, the architect and applicant has been very open um, by providing the concept behind this home and, and the fact that um, security and privacy was, was a key um, sort of priority. And while I respect that and I respect everyone to build um, a home to their own taste, um, I think that we also need to look at how that fits and lands on the street, that that context is why we have local government and why we have planning rules um, and why we have considerations in terms of street context in our scheme. Um, and I think that where we look at this interface with the street, those um, desires for privacy and security speak to me in the design and I think that that is in, inhibit, inhibiting the ability for the house to really have that two-way interface and to look as if it is part of the typical style of Mount Hawthorne, not in that it has a pitched roof but in that the homes um, do have um, that, that interface with the street and I think that's what's, um, that's what's missing here. We've had extensive conversations with the applicant about achieving that. Um, I understand that there's um, a desire to stick with the um, design as it is. Um, we have tried to have these conversations to um, to really have that addressed and really it comes back to um, I think that that key, those key priorities um, that are really um, expressing themselves through that. Um, also just want to note that this accept that this isn't a character retention area and if residents are seeking for the council to um, really intervene on things like architectural styles then they will need to go down the path of character retention. Um, our built form policy um, is is about is not able to have design guidelines for the whole of City of Vincent because design guidelines do need to be about precincts and about street contexts. So um, it is worth noting that that there are a number of applications or um, um, residents who are approaching the city from Mount Hawthorne to have co um, these conversations because I think there is a desire to look at um, character retention by at least um, a, you know a, a sort of a, a key group of, of residents that have really banded together on this and, and made their views known. As it stands currently, we don't have character retention um, guidelines on Kalgoorlie Street. We don't have the ability to dictate architectural style, um, but we do have the ability to say that we believe that in terms of the street context, that the design and the interface with the street is not there. Um, and that for me, it really just needs to have a much more of a sort of two-way um, interaction with the street, not just surveillance, from the um, Jali window for the residents living within but for the building to feel open um, and um, to really um, engage with that street context in the way that is quite typical of Mount Hawthorne homes. So um, so I'm just um, speaking in support of the officer recommendation. Are there any further comments? Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? I declare it carried. Invite Councillor Topperberg back in. Welcome back, Councillor Toppelberg. We're now moving on to item 9.5, which is 351 Stirling Street, Highgate, six multiple dwellings. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved, Councillor Gondoszewski. 
Seconded, Councillor Toppelberg. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just get to my notes. Um, I think we've we've heard um, uh, from the applicant in relation to um, some of the changes that have been made to this design um, over time in relation to um, addressing issues around um, or to ensure the minimisation of impacts on adjoining residential properties around overshadowing um, and there are also conditions in, in relation to overlooking. I've visited um, the street uh, yesterday and um, it's clear to me that um, the issue related to the front setback is in terms of not meeting the deemed to comply criteria is primarily due to the um, the existence of a, um, a group of units uh, in close proximity that are significantly set back from the street. Um, but that essentially what is proposed um, has been designed in consideration of the um, setbacks of the surrounding streetscape. Um, I uh, appreciate the applicant um, has considered the request from the adjoining neighbour in relation to um, amending the front setback um, and, um, uh, and he's provided the commentary in relation to um, why that may, um, has not been considered to be appropriate. Um, I, but I think ultimately on the plans that are presented, um, I can appreciate this is development, this is an intensification of a use on the site um, and that is impactful um, to surrounding neighbours. But I, I think that um, the design um, has um, gone some way to addressing concerns in relation to overshadowing. Um, I'm, uh, I have been assured that the um, parking configuration and the swept paths are appropriate for the use um, and for safety of the um, residents of the property um, and in terms of the, um, the setback, yes, I, I can see that um, ultimately it has been... Um, there is... Um, it is a, a modern design um, and that will... Um, that, um, but there are, I guess... Um, it, so visually there will be um, that it is strong um, and we've just heard discussion around um, you know design in terms of the residential streetscape I think this is um, this streetscape has um, you know sort of a lot more variance in it and um, and ultimately this is not going to be um, through the design and, and the setback that's been proposed, I think that um, there has been consideration of the surrounding properties. Um, so I'm supportive of the officer recommendation. Councillor Toppelberg. Uh, well, nothing, nothing specific to add. I think that it's reflective of what the scheme looks for in that area. Uh, there's no question the setback requirement for deemed to comply is an anomaly, uh, and I think that's a fair assessment of it. Uh, whilst I think that it's admirable that the applicant has given some consideration to it, I don't think that it's necessary at all. I think that the setback as proposed is uh, wholly appropriate for the site, um, and the idea that somebody who's renovated into their backyard needs to protect the uh, solar access to their carport because they're using it for alfresco is not a basis for making somebody uh, set their building further back, so I'm comfortable um, I think, I think it reflects what the scheme is looking for in the area and will support the officer recommendation. Councillors? Um, look, at, we uh, did meet with uh, the adjoining resident and talk through some of the concerns and um, the officers did talk to the applicant about whether setting back the development would assist. Um, I take the applicant on um, advice that um, that could potentially lead to further impacts for the neighbour in terms of potential, the particularly um, overlooking into the front area, which is um, a sort of extension of the veranda. There is actually a little courtyard at the front, just behind the um, garage that the neighbour does use regularly as their outdoor space, given that the backyard is uh, west facing. Um, it is the sort of development that we would be envisaging in this R80 area of Stirling Street, but as Councillor Kondrzewski says, that when you lose a single storey dwelling and replace it with a three storey multiple unit development, that is impactful. Um, but I think that the applicant has really given a lot of thought 
to overshadowing, to overlooking um, the diagrams um, provided in the uh, plans are of a of a magnitude that you don't often see um, from from an applicant in terms of dealing with all of those particular issues. I think that that does um, appear to show and demonstrate that there has been a lot of thought going gone that's gone into um, the impacts and the ability to design this building in a way to really deal with those impacts. So um, I think that this is uh, this is the best outcome. Um, I don't think that changing it would, would be a better one and I'm happy to support the officer recommendation. Are there any further comments? Okay, I'll put it all those in favour. Declare it carried. That brings us to item 9.4, which is number 441 William Street and number 6 Brisbane Place, Perth Hotel, Restaurant and Office Development. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Councillor Toppelberg. Seconded, Councillor Hallett. Thank you, Mayor Cole. A uh, couple of comments in relation to this one. Uh, so, um, I will, in the first instance, foreshadow a deferral. And the reason why I think that this item needs to be deferred is because I think that the, whilst the officers have attempted to condition it, the current layout of the ground floor uh, is wrong for a variety of reasons. And I don't think it's something that be, can be conditioned. I think if you take the, uh, the, it seems to rely on the apparent need for the coffee shop to be located at the William Street end. If you were to take the hotel reception and the bike parking rental uh, and the bin store and put them towards the western side of the development, so that those, so the hotel reception, for example, which would have an interactive frontage to the, frontage to the street, uh, and place the coffee shop and amenities in the centre of the development and adjacent to the uh, created laneway, I think that would deliver a far better outcome in terms of the ability to actually move the bins in and out to provide bike rental next to the street. People enjoying their morning coffee and the al fresco that's drawn in there aren't going to have bins and bikes being uh, ferried past them. I think that it's a, it's a simple way of achieving the outcome uh, without a major redesign. And uh, I had a good look at Brisbane Terrace because I did speak last week about potentially um, seeking to remove the commercial uh, uh, tenancy on Brisbane uh, or Brisbane Place, sorry, and having access through there, but it is impossible pretty much uh, to get the turning circle to get any large vehicles in there, and that aside from the potential noise impact. So I do accept the officers and uh, the applicants' acceptance of William Street as being the appropriate place for, um, for the loading bays. I'll talk in a moment about car parking, but just in terms of that access, um, William Street in the early hours of the morning is a ghost town. There is absolutely, uh, with a proper management plan, clear ability to be able to provide uh, for that pick up and drop off uh, service uh, immediately adjacent to the property uh, seven days a week if required. Um, and if you look at some of the street cleaning and things that go on in that area, the, the noise impacts or otherwise would be no different to what we would expect in a town centre currently. Um, yeah, so for me, the, that ground floor design needs to reflect what we're trying to achieve, which is to actually get particularly the rubbish bins, but when I look at it, I, I don't understand why the bike rental and the hotel reception in particular aren't at the front. You could create quite an interesting space uh, given the way that it's landscaped and that setback to the uh, to the north um, with an internal courtyard to the to the cafe use, whilst it might not necessarily attract uh, as many peop uh, people uh, from the street or not from the hotel. Uh, it may well do. Um, it was made clear tonight that it's not intended to be a full restaurant or otherwise, so it seems to be almost an ancillary use and I assume would be providing mostly breakfast service to um, people staying uh, at the hotel. In terms of car parking in general, uh, the uh, I think from a, a customer point of view or uh, people staying at the hotel, it's pretty simple. If you go to a hotel that doesn't have parking, you don't arrive by car because there's nowhere, to, there's nowhere for you to, well, you don't bring a car because there's nowhere for you to park it. Uh, and if you do, you do your research before or you, you, you uh, ask at the hotel. Um, in terms of staff, one of the other things and the other reasons why I would be looking to defer the item is I think that we do need something more than we'll manage the staff. Whilst I understand an operator hasn't been engaged yet and this is really a seeking a planning approval, I do think some thought needs to be given to uh, staff parking. I understand Councillor gondoshevsky has got an amendment about some of the numbers to do with parking, but I think it's fairly simple. There are a number of uh, either Vincent owned or other car parks in the area, uh, some of which sell uh, monthly or even annual permits, so it would be quite easy to uh, provide a management plan that would make it far or 
palatable and easy to explain to any potential objectors uh, how the car parking is, is to be managed. So for me, the, I, I think that the design reflects uh, and I have had conversations with the director. I think the design has the potential to be something very interesting. It would rely heavily on the selection of materials because if it was if it was done uh, as is possible, given the the outline of the design, it could be done. Uh, uh, what's the right terminology? There are ways to achieve that economically, which would not deliver the outcome that I think everyone is envisaging. So, uh, hopefully, the um, uh, potential. Uh, clause that relates to the approval of materials and other uh, the materials to be used would uh, deliver the outcome that would be envisaged. But um, as a general principle, if we're talking about a site uh, in a town centre providing zero car parking, I think that that's potentially an issue. But I think it's wholly manageable because the people coming to the site are specific as hotel guests and the people who'd be working on the site is manageable through a uh, car parking management plan. So as I said, for me, it requires more work and those things aren't conditionable at this stage, uh, but I think that the redesign of the ground floor and a proper parking management plan in relation to staff would uh, result in something that is approvable in the location. Councillor Hallett. Um, not much to add to that, I guess. <laughs> I concur with those two concerns. I guess just to say that um, I think this is a, a great... Um, use for what's been a vacant site for a very long time and so it would be great to um, see this one progress but do certainly um, support a deferral to um, allow some of those things to be addressed because I think um, with them um, it could be a great outcome for um, this part of William Street. Councillors, Councillor Harley. Uh, through you, Mayor, just I want to address the issue of parking. So I would uh, support a deferral coming forward. I do have concerns about on one of our high streets um, that this business model relies on us losing two parking bays. Um, I'm concerned about, um, they talk about a booking system for the loading bay. This is public land. So my concern would be that they manage all their contractors through a booking system and that's no problems if they're arriving um, in the hours that Councillor Topberg was talking about, which is you know quite late at night, um, where I'm um, in the early hours of the morning where you can shoot a cannon down there. That's not a problem. It's to do with the pickup and deliveries during the day. So that, that concerns me that um, a development comes before us and it relies on us giving up um, parking bays um, on a high street. Um, and I did spend a bit of time down there um, recently of an evening. Um, and I was lucky there was parking there actually because I went and bought 300 bucks worth of stuff at William Top that I hadn't been planning to, which just shows the value of parking, um, being able to get that on a high street. But um, I I'm, think maybe the developer could have considered if there was room. I understand there's not the actual complete turning circle, but whether there can be a mechanism um, for them to drive. I don't know the technical term, sorry. Whether they drive onto a turning plate, pardon? Turntable, turn, turning plate, um, and whether there could be consideration of that so we don't have to give up parking um, on one of our important high streets. But I'd support a deferral motion coming forward. I'm happy to move it if everyone's um, finished. Before you do that, I just noted, I'm just going to comment that the applicant is here. I think that they are keen to hear comments on reasons for, for deferral. So I'd just like to give council members an opportunity if there's anything that hasn't been put forward to make comment for the benefit of the applicant. Um, I guess from my perspective again it is the functional aspects. This is reflected in the minutes of the design review panel on the 14th of November that said the functional aspects need to be worked on and finalised, i.e. bins, patron drop-off and laundry. So um, Councillor Topperberg's design sounds intriguing but there may be other things that uh, we could consider. Um, given where we're to the design. No, sorry. <laughs> Suggestions for design, sorry. Uh, look, but just in terms of the parking, I, I know we're a long way into this, but just given where we're at into the process, I wanted to put forward an amendment in relation to the um, waiving of parking. Um, and it just relates to actually sort of perhaps giving a, um, a number that has been, um, that has been, had some, that relates to the thinking behind it rather than just being something that has been sort of put forward and proposed as a cash in lieu payment. Um, uh, and it's on the green, and if I can get a seconder, I will talk to it. Seconded, Councillor Hallett. Thank you. Um, this just relates to, look, 
Ultimately, I accept that the um, guests of the hotel um, are uh, likely to be able to find suitable parking or will not have cars, um, and I accept that the way that the cafe is proposed to operate, the patrons will primarily be related to um, the hotel. Um, not necessarily, but um, that, they, that, again, that there is um, parking in the surrounding streets, um, but it is time-limited, generally. Um, and so what, I guess, my... Um, concerns in relation to parking as per Councillor Toberberg is relates to staff and so I did some just some figuring in relation to the table one of our parking policy in terms of the um, per person calculation that I would sort of see as appropriate for staff it, it, um, based on that um, and I guess what I'm proposing is that essentially we go through the process of saying that we would be willing to look at what our parking policy says but recognising the circumstances of this development that council as part of the approval would um, see fit to waive a certain number of those bays um, and then um, that the rest would be able to be taken care of through cash in lieu um, and so that essentially it's, it's roughly equivalent um, it is an increase in the proposed cash in lieu contribution of one thousand to bring it to 51,300 um, and that would be essentially um, the amendment. Councillor Hallett. Councillors, Councillor Toppleberg. Thank you. I support the intent to put some science behind the numbers and we'll, uh, rather than what we were told last week which is the applicant said they were prepared to pay $50,000 but uh, in no way does it prejudice my uh, eventual uh, view on potential cash in lieu which would be subject to the car parking management plan because if they if there is a strong reliance on the city to provide uh, to provide the parking uh, that, that's required for the development that has a, a calculable uh, cash in lieu component if the car parking management plan that is submitted uh, I presume uh, down the track um, prior to approval if, if that's the direction we're moving in if that provides sufficient information uh, to be able to put some numbers around what the car, actual car parking shortfall of that impact would be. I'm happy to reconsider that calculation at that time, but that may well double or halve what this is. But I do note that according to our policy, we would be asking for $350,000 uh, for, for uh, the development, which I think is manifestly excessive, but whether 51300 is the right number would rely on the car parking management plan in the long term for me. Councillors, Councillor Patakis. Um, I just want to uh, just reserve the right to consider something like that when we get, um, if we get something come back back to us and it's complete. Um, it's just a little bit too early for me to consider at the moment. Councillors? Through Mayor, I don't support the um, amendment. I, um, I do, again, I think it's good to be able to put some science behind it, but um, and I note that the applicant, applicant has offered to pay that amount of money, but I note that there's a significantly larger amount of money which would be required a cash in lieu. Um, I'd also like to see um, some discussion around the calculation of uh, potential loss of two, um, two bays at the front of the hotel. So for me, um, given that there's been talk of a foreshadowed deferral, um, which I would be supportive of, um, this is too early and I'd like to um, have everything on the table before considering what a cash in lieu amount would be. Councillors? Um, I'm going to support the um, amendment on the basis of the information that we currently have before us. Um, that may change, um, but if this if this was not to be deferred, I think this is a better outcome. And I I appreciate the rigour based on policy that has been put into this, and I'm comfortable with um, supporting this on the basis of the information before us tonight. If that dramatically changes through a car parking management plan that may or may not come forward. Um, then that can be reconsidered, but for on the basis of what we have before us this evening, I support the recommendation. Is there any further comments? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? All those against? Two against, Councillor Vitakis and Councillor Harley. Thank you. Back to the substantive. Um, I might just make some comments given that. We're potentially looking at a deferral, which I cannot move. Um, 
<clears throat> I just wanted to reiterate that for me the main concern is that I'd like for the hotel to be in this location. I agree with Councillor Hallett. I think this is a good application in terms of having a hotel on this site. I note it's a difficult site being a narrow lot and I do like the way in which the laneway is a feature and faces north. I think that's really important that adds um, that adds the sort of wow factor to this development. So I can understand the difficulty with parking. I think that the emphasis on bikes, etc., is is good. Um, I am concerned about the functionality, or rather, I see it as a dysfunctionality of the ground floor. And I do not. And I just want to make sure that council is not in a position where we approve something um, where this, the ability to service itself has a negative impact on the public realm because once it's approved and once it's operating, this is for the lifetime of the development. So I do think that um, based on the um, feedback from council members, I'm really hoping that the applicant will go away and consider that ground floor plan so that servicing of the hotel works smoothly and efficiently without having a significant impact on the public realm. And I think that the ground floor um, the ground floor concept is really critical to that in terms of placement of, of bin storage in particular, but I think it does need to be reconfigured. Um, so that's my feedback. Thank you. Councillors? Over deferral. Can moved by Councillor Harley, seconded by Councillor Topper. Can we give the reasons for deferral before we do it so that people know what they're voting on? Um, it is a... We're supposed to give reasons for a procedural motion. I think that motion. you need to say when it needs to come back to council. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, it depends. don't want to put the officers under pressure, but um, I'd like to see this um, deferred motion come back to council at the next available council meeting and, um, for the um, reasons outlined tonight in regards to um, concerns about parking, concerns about orientation. Um, do the I ask through you, Chair, do the officers feel they have enough information to... Um, do, Director, do you have sufficient information? Uh, can I propose um, reasons? If, with the, no, not the, with the, the approval of the okay. mover. So, so for the applicant, so it'd be deferred with the, uh, to allow the applicant to consider ground floor design to facilitate the proposed service access and operation of the bike rental facility and car parking management plan specifically in relation to staff, proposed staff car parking. Um, Just ensuring that all services have been captured. So to facilitate the proposed services access, then perhaps if we make it plural. But it was the applicant to consider the ground floor design to facilitate the proposed services access and operation of the bike rental facilities. Okay, thank you. I think that's sufficient. Um, there being no debate, being a procedural motion, I'll put it. You have a question? Go ahead. Sorry, just through you, Mayor Cole. Um, further to Councillor Harley's note for the next available council meeting, just administration's comment. Um, it will take some time for the applicant to make the changes that have been requested. It will then take some, because they, they could be quite significant if we're moving uh, bin stores, etc. Um, so we would suggest the, the May meeting to allow the applicant a few weeks to make those changes for administration to then assess them and finalise a report. Okay, well, if it's done sooner, I'm sure it can come back sooner. So, yes, okay. Accepted by the mover and seconder of the deferral motion. Yes, okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? I declare the motion carried. It's been deferred. Um, we have made it through the milestone of development services. Thank you to our director and manager. Um, the next item that we will be dealing with this evening is 12.1, the draft City of Vincent Innovate Reconciliation Action Plan 2019-2021. Moved by Councillor Loden, seconded by Councillor Harley. Thanks, Mayor Cole. Um, hopefully uh, community engagement doesn't go quite as long. Um, uh, I just wanted to pull this out. Um, I'm really pleased with this wrap. We're obviously, I obviously fully recommend it to our community. I'm looking forward to their feedback coming from this. 
Um, I think it's a great step to move from a reflect wrap to an innovate wrap, but I think the thing that's really good about this as well is that we're laying the important groundwork to transition to a stretch wrap at some point in the future, which is obviously an aspiration down the track, particularly having a commitment around the number of people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples that we employ, commitments around taking on two trainees. Um, and you can see in that relationship space that really connection and celebration that we are doing across the city as well. Um, I do um, recognising oh, uh, that two of our directors haven't had an opportunity to speak tonight. I thought I'd ask them both a question, if I could, um, if, you're, if you're still awake. Um, one, of my, uh, one of my observations, I guess one of the challenges with the WAP and what, for a lot of organisations is how you do business engagement and do business engagement well. Um, in, in my own work that I've, I've seen that those challenges very strongly um, and that really does come down to how we put together our contracts, how we think about it when we are doing our design, build and construct. So, um, and I also observe that the bulk of the work being done in this is done in the Community Engagement Directorate um, and so the ways that we can do that is seeing that trickling out through the rest of the organisation. So I guess my question to both uh, Director of Corporate Services and infrastructure and environment is um, how much engagement have you had with this wrap as it's been developed um, and do you foresee that there's opportunities in the future to engage with that to support uh, greater business engagement in your own directorates as well? Through you, Mayor. Um, well, uh, my director's direct involvement with the Innovate Wrap has been somewhat limited. Um, I'm hugely supportive of this as I am outside of my work at the city um, and will continue to work with um, the uh, uh, Director of Community um, Engagement to um, wherever we can make sure that we can influence the future direction of the city's wrap. Yep. Through you, Michael. Um, uh, a similar answer, I think, which is that we um, uh, officers within the Directorate of Infra Infrastructure and Environment have been involved all along the development at different stages. And what I can say is officers are very committed to the RAP and are keen to input wherever they can so that uh, the objectives are met. Thank you. So the only comment I'll add there is um, I'm not expecting that we're going to change the wrap now and include that thing and these sort of ideas, but these are the things that we will be needing to think about over the next three years um, if we do want to build on the, the great work that we have under the existing wrap. And those, I foresee, are the big challenges. How do you engage Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander businesses within the organisation? We do have, um, I think... 5% of goods and services under the people, art and culture is allocated as a target, um, which is a great positive step. And I think those are the types of things that we need to be thinking about over the next three years um, as how we can embed that in other parts of what we do. And it does require a bit of creative thinking about how we engage with things. Um, so it is challenging, um, but um, if I'm still here, <laughs> it's time. I'll be interested to see where that conversation internally lands and where we land with our next wrap. Thank you. Are there any? I'll oh, move to the seconder. Sorry, Councillor Harley. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to add a couple of comments to what Councillor Loden has just um, said. First of all, to um, commend and thank the staff um, who've been involved in this, and by that I mean all City Vincent staff who's in, who have embraced um, this process, um, particularly the cultural um, awareness training. And don't like to use the word journey, but sometimes you just got to use the word journey. Um, and this has been a journey um, for the city. There is no doubt about it. Um, and we, I feel very proud that, we're, that I'm part of a council um, who have undertaken, uh, undertaken this work, um, are looking further down the road to a stretch wrap. Um, different things that are very visual in terms of our flags, including our flag at Axford Park, um, the proper acknowledgement of um, Aboriginal people uh, the welcome to countries we do, and much more than the symbolism of that, which I think is the easy ticker box, um, the changing of the hearts and minds, that's the value of the wrap. Um, and the rubber hits the road in the procurement space. Um, state government and federal government obviously have these challenges as well, as do private business. Um, 
and obviously human resources ultimately um, in the uh, closing the gap it is about economic achievement and economic achievement through employment um, as well and business opportunities so I'm looking forward to seeing more of that we don't actually need a wrap necessarily to do um, these things that can happen and controversially I'm looking I um, hope I live long enough to see a world where we are post wrap um, and where this stuff just becomes the way we do business and we just do it we don't we we don't have to put too much thought into it, it is just the way we all do business and that's the kind of utopia um, that I aim for um, and thank my fellow co-chair and Councillor Topperberg who are um, also councillor reps on the committee and the committee reps who've been, um, who've been really good. So I commend um, to the director, your staff um, and the work that they've done in particular. Councillors. Um, I'll just add it was an absolute pleasure this week to meet Kelvin and Paige who are joining us as trainees um, from Aranmore Catholic College. Um, they'll be with the City of Vincent for the next 18 months and this is a really significant move forward I think when you take that, that step into an innovate wrap and you're starting to see real outcomes around employment opportunities, procurement, grant funding, starting to really um, have you know outcomes that are meaningful um, that provide real opportunity for Aboriginal people, Aboriginal organisations. I think that's really where you start to see the real achievements start to happen. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to work more closely with Aaron Moore Senior College and it's really fantastic to have two young Aboriginal students join us and be with us for 18 months. And I think local government also is a great opportunity for them because of the diversity of work that we do. So hopefully it'll be exciting for them and I'm really happy to have them on board. Are there any further comments? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. Uh, the next item is a notice of motion, item 14.1. Notice of motion from Councillor Toppelberg, tender or quotations for bulk verge collection. Moved Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Gondoszewski. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor Cole. So, um, the genesis, and I know we had a discussion about this when we were doing the waste management plan, and I know, uh, well, I, given that the contract was coming, coming up, I just wanted to make it something that was quite specific as a council decision not to pursue uh, a, another uh, contract or go out to tender uh, for bulk verge. Um, I was asked to provide the reasons, the dot points that are there. Uh, fairly clear, but some of just wanted to relay some of my experiences this year. Um, I think uh, I've been known in my younger days to be a curb surfer at times looking for stuff. Um, uh, when they're, back when there used to be things, I think I've got a, a restored chair somewhere uh, in the house that uh, was once on somebody's verge. Uh, in the days of uh, Gumtree, Buy Nothing, etc., those days are pretty much over. But some of the things I saw this year uh, or heard about, I have a... Uh, friend who lives around the corner whose neighbour uh, the day that they got the notice uh, which was effectively two weeks and three days before the pickup they placed a large freezer uh, that was apparently full of uh, old meat uh, out the front of their, their, their property so that sat there for two weeks in the summer sun and when the um, front end loader went to pick it up uh, the front of the freezer opened uh, resulting in uh, a smell that meant that the neighbourhood pretty much had to stay inside until we had to send our officers out to go and do the clean up and replace all of the mulch at the front of their property because after two days the smell hadn't disappeared. Uh, I had um, at uh, late hours of the evening had people, uh, you could hear the distinct sound of uh, um, suitcases as they went along the, the pavement and that lovely gadunk 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 sound as they were walking down the street which was uh, young kids three four o'clock in the morning just going and rummaging through people's stuff throwing it everywhere and trying to seek anything of value to do god knows what with but uh, that was something i saw personally uh, i took some great photos uh, in and around the city of rubbish literally thrown across multiple uh, properties what you also find is where people tend to uh, bring something out, the neighbours see that as the dumping place, so you, unless somebody has had a, uh, been running a dormitory that we don't know about, people disposing of six or seven mattresses out the front of their own property is likely people dumping rubbish and my, I suppose my favourite is uh, the day after the collection is that people decide to bring all of their junk out and go and leave it in the city is then left to go around and pick it up. So for me our current method 
has run its course, uh, the length of time that people put stuff out for, what people put out, how it's treated, uh, there's uh, safety issues involved. I just don't think it reflects a contemporary council and I also think that the potential cost savings of other methods are significant. Um, the notice of motion specifically doesn't refer to uh, an on-demand um, uh, skip bin service, which is what some of our uh, some other local councils are doing. This gives the um, officers the, the scope to come and tell us what they think is the best thing to do and they can feel free to look globally or think outside the square. We may have a, a different proposal, so it's not looking at something specific, but uh, I just think that we, uh, particularly as we're looking to our three bin system, which may well uh, deal uh, more appropriately uh, with our green waste, I think the idea of having between green and bulk verge of having four months of the year where people have got stuff out on their verges is no longer appropriate and ho hopefully, well this is just making it clear that we as a council don't want to go out for a tender to seek for people to do that in the city. Councillor Gondoshevsky. Oh, look, just to note that in terms of the administration comments that this is ultimately not considered to be um, the best uh, option from an environmental standpoint um, and increasingly it does appear that other local governments are um, moving to other um, collection mechanisms that may allow for more sorting or um, uh, yeah of sorting of the waste that is collected um, so that really only what is um, unable to be utilised or recycled in some other fashion is what ends up in landfill. Um, and so I guess I, I'm, um, I feel this was probably something that was on our agenda anyway. I too, um, this year has been the worst year I've had for people contacting me in relation to problems and I certainly have observed quite a bit of the um, post-collection dumping issues that I think probably are something that look, may be problematic with whatever um, approach um, and alternative options are considered, but, um, and that should be probably something we do consider. But um, yes, I'm supportive of this notice of motion. Councillors? Councillors? Um, to be honest, I feel that this notice of motion plots the course that's already been established by our waste strategy, um, but perhaps just gives a bit more of a defined date um, because it is the, the second um, project within the waste strategy. The first was FOGO, which um, we've had our options appraisal and we've decided that's the path to go down and we're on that path now. Second cab off the rank is bulk waste, so I think this probably just punctuates it a little more what um, the waste strategy would have um, have us do regardless and it's good to know that the, de that the um, administration is, is um, working towards that date of June 2019. Um, yes, in terms of bulk waste collection, um, you know, it's been highlighted, we're on to it, we're working towards it. Um, in terms of how that will go in the community, I still think there are the stalwarts out there that love it. Um, but yes, definitely agree with Councillor Gondoshevsky. I certainly fielded way more complaints this year than previous and a lot has changed in terms of all of the other ways to move on um, items to the neighbourhood. By nothing is, is a sight to behold. Um, if you're a member of one of those Facebook pages. Um, and I think that really when we communicate with our community, it's really going to have to be around um, best um, options for avoiding landfill. I think that is really the critical issue here and that um, we only see a 15% diversion from our um, verge collection and while there is a perception that a lot is picked up off the verge and recycled, when you look at other methods it doesn't hit anywhere near close what you can recycle if you use other methods and I think that's going to be the critical issue in this discussion with those who still have that um, attachment to the junk verge collection. Um, I'm surprised Councillor Murphy's yawning and not getting fired up but perhaps it's because he's been working too hard recently um, and maybe we'll fire up when we have the debate in July. Um, but yes, um, any further comments on the notice of motion? Okay, I'll put it all those in favour. I declare it carried. Um, we have one more item to deal with tonight and it is a confidential item so we will um, have to stop the live stream just for, for a moment. Thank you. I've just resumed the live stream just to um, to uh, alert everyone to the fact that Council has dealt with a confidential item and I'm wanting to read out the uh, the 
um, resolution of council. The item is 18.1, appointment of community representatives to the City of Vincent Reconciliation Action Plan Working Group. And the resolution of council is that council appoints the community representatives as detailed in attachment one to the city's reconciliation action plan working group until the 18th of October 2019. Thank you. That um, concludes our meeting for the evening. So I declare the meeting close at three minutes to nine. Thanks everyone.